Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Hop, TFB TV's coinosaur of cheap guns, and this is the new 16 shot 22 caliber Taurus TX22. I'm gonna throw it to Hop in the studio to take a closer look at it, then we're gonna come back out here and see how it shoots. Punch it. 22 pistols are just about the most fun you can have at the range with pants on and super affordable to shoot. Everybody should have one. There's just one problem. Almost every full size 22 pistol on the market holds just 10 rounds, and they either look like a Papa Nambu or a Star Trek phaser. The Taurus TX-22 is a full-size, lightweight, high-capacity 22 pistol that looks like a normal striker-fired pistol. Because it is one. The TX-22 is insanely light for the size and capacity. It weighs in at 17.3 ounces versus 25 ounces for a Ruger Mark IV Lite or 17.5 ounces for the suppressor-ready Ruger SR-22. Taurus achieved this lightness by using an aluminum slide with a steel breech block insert instead of a zinc alloy. The two included 16 round mags are made entirely of plastic and have big side cuts which makes them very light. Spare mags are also relatively cheap as far as Taurus goes. The TX-22 has an accessory rail for mounting lights and it has a threaded barrel with an included muzzle adapter for standard half by 28 muzzle devices. I don't have a suppressor because I'm hashtag poor, but it's a neat feature. The TX-22 can be had with 10 round magazines and no threaded barrel for band states. Taurus is positioning the TX-22 as a competition ready pistol, but I don't think that's what it's best suited for. The TX-22 isn't optics ready, and it almost seems too light for competition. In my estimation, the TX-22 was born to be the ultimate kit gun, weighing as much as a Ruger SR-22 but with a longer barrel and an extra 6 rounds per magazine. The TX-22 could supplant the SR-22 as the go-to kit gun, just like the SR-22 supplanted a whole assortment of lightweight 22 caliber revolvers. The TX-22 is just a bit smaller than the average full-size gun. Like with most Taurus guns, I find it to be exquisitely ergonomic. I'm starting to think somebody at Taurus is sneaking into my house at night and measuring my hands. The grip has a medium grit sandpaper texture, similar to but a bit smoother than the current Taurus TH series guns, which makes sense because you don't need as much traction on a 22. It doesn't have official Taurus memory pads, but the sides of the frame do have this cut here that your support hand thumb just naturally falls into. The manual safety lever is ambidextrous and easy to disengage. The slide release and magazine release are not ambidextrous, but the magazine release can be swapped left to right. Both are easy to hit without losing a firing grip, but I'm pretty big as far as people go. Taurus recently announced a version of the TX-22 without the manual safety, and that would be my preferred format for the gun. Okay, let's shoot the damn thing already. The TX-22 trigger is of the single action only pre-cocked striker design, basically like a Glock. It has a short bit of spongy take up, clean break, and a very short crisp reset. Taurus calls this the TPS, Taurus Pitman Trigger System. I'm not sure who Pitman is, but he did a great job. It is nearly as good as the trigger on my single action only hammer fired Smith 22A1. The trigger was so light and fast that I couldn't help but do mag dump after mag dump. Seriously, I have tons of clips of me trying to shoot slow for a few rounds, then just dumping the rest of the mag. Loaded with a full 16 plus one. It's barely slower than the trigger on the 22A, but that's still impressive for a striker trigger. I put a little over 700 rounds through the TX-22 in the first range session, including my entire recycle bin of mixed ammo where I dumped the leftovers from boxes of bulk 22. This time, the dump box consisted of Winchester M22 bulk, Federal bulk, and Remington Golden Bullet. I also shot a few boxes of Winchester M22 45 grain subsonic and Winchester 42 max subsonic, and it chugged through both of them just fine. I tried a couple boxes of Winchester 42 Max PowerPoint, which is my personal favorite 22 loading. Again, no issues there. I had no expectation of reliability issues with any CCI loads, because CCI ammo is what God would use if he bothered to shoot rimfire. I shot some CCI Copper 21 grain, which cycled perfectly as expected, and exhibited bad horizontal stringing, also as expected. That stuff is kind of cool, but it is not accurate. Let's go for that. CCI copper. The TX-22 also wolfed down the 32 grain Stinger, 40 grain Velocitor, 36 grain Mini Mag hollow points, and 40 grain Mini Mag solids. You should have no issues finding a good load to shoot out of this gun. 
While shooting, I was pretty gung-ho with dropping empty mags in the moon dust of an Oregon backwoods rock pit. One of the two mags got too much sand in it and started having problems. Continuing to shoot with that magazine, the TX-22 threw a lot of stovepipes and failures to strip rounds from the magazine. I hate sand. It's so sandy. I'm not surprised that the mags have issues with grit due to how open they are. It may or may not be a big problem for you. I would think that if you use the TX-22 as a competition gun, you'd be dropping mags in the dirt a whole lot. Less so if you use it as a carry piece or a kit gun. With the Sandy Mag, reliability with Federal Auto Match plummeted to almost nothing. But after giving it the old manual mandibular maintenance routine like an N64 cartridge, it was acceptably reliable with normal high velocity bulk ammo. It wouldn't ruin a range day, but it could easily ruin a match. Something to keep in mind. After the first range session, I cleaned the TX-22 and the Sandy magazine, then took it to the indoor range for a follow-up shoot. I put about 500 more rounds through it, including 200 rounds each of American Eagle bulk and Winchester white box bulk. In 500 rounds, I had one failure to strip a round of Winchester 42 Max PowerPoint and two nose dives with Winchester bulk, both with the dirty sand mag. To be honest with you, I would have been okay with that reliability even if the mag didn't have sand in it. Takedown on the TX-22 has all the steps you expect from a striker gun, but a little out of order. Clear the gun, then pull down on the disassembly tab and pull the trigger. The slide moves slightly forward, and then you can pull it straight up off the frame. After over a thousand rounds of rapid fire, the TX-22 is holding up well. There's no alarming wear on any part of the gun, including the plastic magazine feed lips which I was a bit worried about. So how about accuracy? The TX-22 sights are typical three-dot sights, and the rear is adjustable for windage and elevation. These are perfectly functional sights. They're not going to set the world on fire, but I find them way easier to use than the large blacked out style target sights on a lot of 22 pistols. That's a personal preference. I shoot with a combat hold. Cover the evil cardboard with the sights and pull the trigger until the problem goes away. I'm not the accuracy guy. I'm not allowed to operate a motor vehicle without corrective lenses, and I have at least one can of Monster Ultra in my system at all times, but I did shoot some groups with the TX-22. I shot it head to head with my Smith & Wesson 22A1, which is equipped with a red dot. That's not a fair comparison by any means, it was more of a benchmark. The TX-22 kept pace with the 22A up until the distances were great enough that the sights basically covered the entire bullseye and then some. This is essentially anything past 7 yards. The gun is still capable beyond that, but my ability to shoot meaningful groups past 7 yards with irons is non-existent. Before we move on, I'd like to say thanks to Ventura Munitions for sponsoring TFB-TV. They've got bulk ammo, specialty ammo, and defensive ammo for basically all the calibers I've ever heard of. There's a link below in the video description. Check them out if you need something special or need to stock up. I put several brands and loadings of 22 through the TX-22 and got the best results with Remington Thunderbolt and Remington Golden Bullet. In my experience, these are the most accurate standard 22 loads in all my guns. I don't shoot the fancy match grade ammo because I don't have any precision 22s, and I think you'll agree it's wildly improper to mag dump that fancy Ely Prime stuff. The TX-22 showed decent results with most CCI loads, decent results with the heavier than standard Winchester load. It got surprisingly bad results with Federal Auto Match and Federal High Velocity Match. I would have guessed the TX-22 didn't like lead round nose ammo, except for the stellar results I got with the Remington T-Bolt. As you can see from these groups, if you discount the flyers caused by my attention deficit and medically dangerous heart rate, the TX-22 will shoot most normal 22 loads into acceptable group sizes. Alright, so, the Taurus TX-22. Is it accurate? Yes. Reliable? Yes. Cool and fun? Yes and hell yes. I shot the crap out of this gun until it was almost too hot to hold. I really couldn't help it. The Taurus TX-22 would be an excellent kit gun, suppressor host, or even a defensive gun if you're dead set on carrying 22 long rifle. If you're in the market for a 22 pistol, I can highly recommend you pick up one of these guns. Well, that's our show. Thanks for watching. Shout out to the members of the TFB Discord for being a bunch of cool dudes and dudettes. And a big thank you to viewers who support the show on Patreon. Links to the Discord and Patreon are in the video description. If you like TFB TV, consider becoming a patron. It really helps us out and you'll be eligible for all sorts of giveaways.
See you next time.